Hi, I'm Lena Hall. Welcome to my channel. For those who don't know me, this channel is about programming, big data, machine learning, functional programming, and other things that I'm interested in. And I will put some more information in the video description so that you will be able to look at it. And uh, this time I'm making a more conversational video and I will of course be showing some interesting technical stuff. Uh, I'm usually working on many different things at the same time. Uh, currently at the moment I'm working tightly with things like uh, Apache Spark and MLlib, Kafka, Kubernetes and other. So yeah, <laughs> you might also see a lot of scenes from Seattle because I live here and I think it's a really wonderful city with very active tech scene. It's super easy to find uh, like-minded, passionate people interested in technology and other things. And nature is great. So first, let me show you some new Spark stuff I've been trying out. But after that, at the very end, you will find some awesome Seattle views. And I will also tell you about my upcoming conferences. So what I want to show you today is how to run a Spark job using Kubernetes as a scheduler, which is a possibility that is available since the most recent Spark release, which allows running jobs in like a Kubernetes native way. And this possibility is still very experimental, but it doesn't hurt to try it. So what basically happens is uh, when we start a Spark job, Kubernetes starts executors and a driver. And then after the job is done, we will be able to see the result on the driver itself. So let's take a look. First thing we would need to do is to clone the Spark repo because we need to know the container image that Kubernetes should use to run the driver and executor pods. After we cloned the Spark repo, we can actually build it After the Spark source itself is built, we can build a container image and push it to the container registry. We will also need an actual Spark job project to use. And it can be any Spark job project like WordCount or anything. So here I'm just creating a new project, which will be calculating the pi number. And then this project we will need to package into a jar. And here you can see the actual code for the Spark job. In this case, it's just the pi number calculation using Spark context parallelize, but it can be anything for your Spark job. In the current version, we will either need to upload the jar somewhere in an accessible destination or we need to prepackage the jar into the container image itself. So, but here I'm just uploading my jar into storage. It can be Azure storage or Google storage or S3. After we have a container image itself and a job itself, we can use the spark submit command to actually submit a job. So here, jar URL is the address for the jar file that we use as a Spark job, and we're accessing the Kubernetes master through the Kube proxy. And we can also start checking the status of pods. And we see that driver and executor start to be created, and we can periodically check until all of them are up and running. And the status of the job will also change in the main command window. 
So here we see that they are terminating. So let's check back. And the job is terminated and succeeded. That means that the driver pod should be completed. And to see it, there is actually a command kubectl uh, get pods show all. And here we see it's completed. Now let's check the logs to see the result. So logs. And here it is. The pi is roughly this number. And here are all the logs of the driver pod. And then we see that no executors are left and the driver is completed. That's it. I have quite a few conferences coming up too. So I will be helping with a virtual conference called F Sharp Conf. It's going to be on April 16, a full day virtual conference event. And then on April 17, I'm going to give a talk at University of Washington about big data. I am really looking forward to that. And then on April 25, I'm actually going to Chicago and given a talk at Go to Chicago conference and talking about distributed databases and Kubernetes. And then in May, I have a build conference and I'm co-organizing a machine learning conference called ML for All. And as the CFP is still open. So if you have great ideas, really crazy ideas, feel free to submit. It's going to be great. And then uh, a little later this year, I'm also speaking at DockerCon, O'Reilly, Velocity, and OzCon about uh, scalable streaming systems. And I'm actually really super excited about every single one of them. Oh, and I'm also at the program committee for Lambda World Conference, which is a functional programming conference. And it's going to be in Seattle for the first time. Uh, previously, it was in Spain. Uh, and it's going to be in a really amazing venue. It's a, a living computer museum. So make a point to attend. I think it's going to be amazing. Well, that was it. Thank you very much for watching my video. And I really hope that you enjoyed it. I'm curious what you're working on and what things you are interested in learning about. So let me know and see you next time.